we want to talk about, uh, which is the Black Miner L1. So obviously we've made mention of it. Uh, we've we've kind of given some insight. We've done some videos on the YouTube channel uh, about John has done some videos on the YouTube channel uh, about it and, and what he's done. And uh, we discovered, you know, some people were chatting on the video uh, in the comments section, just kind of giving some uh, insight of their experience. And so we started testing some of that stuff. Yep. Uh, and uh, so we wanted to kind of just go over it and, and talk to you a little bit about uh, what we found out and efficiency, which will lead us into Gandalf's question um, as we, we finish up with the L1. Yeah. So if you guys haven't... Um watch the video yet i'll tag it in the chat below right now just for everyone to see um we had a subscriber reach out and post some comments on the l1 on our on our latest review that we did the teardown review i went ahead and translated some of them and uh went ahead and applied some of those settings to the L1 that we have, uh, and um, they work fairly well. I mean, we, we did see some higher than usual hardware errors, but uh, that's to be expected when you're changing some of the frequencies around and the voltage. Uh, usually those hardware errors kind of peak and then they kind of stable off and you don't really see any more being added on to it. So we saw a lot right at the beginning as the chips were kind of dialing into this um, 500 megahertz frequency that this gentleman recommended and uh, he had the voltage set down to 1230 uh, so we were getting that 300 mega hash that uh, he was suggesting that it was possible we, we confirmed that it was possible and then i went ahead and checked the amperage between the bus bars so, you know, if you, are, if you aren't familiar with the L1s and you guys didn't have a chance to really go through the video, the L1 has, a, has an attached PSU and it uses bus bars to give power to the, the hash boards. So I went ahead and touched off on the bus bars, which if you're not familiar with electricity, be careful doing this. They are live when I'm testing them. Um, but I was able to get uh, some, some interesting readings and doing some simple math uh, we're getting around, uh, I think, 28, 27, 2800 watts, roughly topping out at like 3150 uh, at three mega hash. So it was, I tried to test it the best I could a couple of different times, a couple of different, you know, spaces and, and period of time. Um, what I'm doing is I'm taking that amperage and I'm multiplying it by our current voltage to get the wattage that's going through those bus bars. So that's how I'm calculating here with, with what we've got going on. But um, there was definitely some interesting numbers. Uh, and we know that these things are, are overclockable and under-tunable now. So I'm curious to see what, what's next for these miners moving forward. Yeah. Uh, so lesson learned here through some of the information that we've delved through with the L1 is we can get over five giga hash on it uh, we know that we've overclocked it we can we can definitely uh, 52 5300 is very achievable i think as uh, we figure out tuning a little bit more we probably could get closer to six uh, we just have to really dive in and, and do some uh, major tuning um, uh, on the actual or if there's some firmware hint hint hive uh, that possibly could happen uh, we can get up there uh, and then like John said, three giga hash at roughly, you know, 28 to 3,200 watts, uh, just depending on on its frequency going up and down. And we've only done a little testing. So uh, I think that this guy uh, can be more efficient uh, and, and it's pretty promising uh, in the long run. Now on to Gandalf's.